have been tuning in since just now. Apologies for the issues again from game one. Couldn't really help it, and Radiant hopefully things will be more there. smooth this game. Alright, so here we are currently we're just beginning game two into the draft already. You can see Insta Ban, Slaughter, Dire Alchemist, team Doom, team. and Winter Wyvern. Alright, so DK back in game one. Let's talk about that first. I mean he really just rolled Radiant over all pack. just rolled all over Team Dwarfal, left no mercy, took no prisoners alive, just destroyed them. So kinda hoping that you know Dwarfal just pull themselves together, just take things up a notch, or actually several notches in this case. And hopefully they're able to contest against DK because DK played excellent and okay not not really that, Ten that seconds I'd say excellent I feel like Dope was just really off the draft was a bit weird a bit funky Five seconds really wasn't working out for them all right so currently right now the first pick again from DK Reserve is gonna be the Tuscar my back actually no back in game one it was yeah it was Dope yeah Dope had the had the Tuscar they did that with the Undying but the lack of synergy coming out no follow up. I mean, despite going for, say, an aggressive Dark dual lane going up Sia. against the PL, but just having the Dazzle Radiant there just made all the difference in the world. So Team Dwarf out, they're going to learn their lesson this time. They're going to first pick the Dark Seer, so that's always a nice, reliable offlaner. Pretty much your way shorter cooldown version of a Magnus. I mean, when you're always at the vacuum. And the Ion Shell as well. Well, Dwarf out, they're going to go pick up Dire the SF this time pick. for themselves. Just in case, you know, DK start this, you know, deciding to ban all these mid laners, then you're like, oh god, who do I pick? Alright, so. Um, Winter Wyvern and banned out from Dwarbao. Yeah, it's pretty much just one of those really annoying heroes, Cancer Hero. You, you just don't want to play against it. So many ways to really screw around just by having Dire Winter Wyvern on your team. So, I mean, you've always got a nice heal, the slow, you get a nice decent burst, and you always get the curse as well. So AA, they pick up the AA, very nice. Takes out Dazzle from the equation, at least for a bit. And at the same time, remaining. you take out, who else is there? Witch Doctor, you, of course, Five Shadow Fiend's mech. Remaining. And it is a Radiant SF, again. So Team Dwarbao, that's really Reserve annoying to play time. against. He's gonna be farming up pretty easily. Poof, poof, poof. Third band's gonna be the Ember this time, DK. Radiant team band. Well, and their defense, I wouldn't mind playing against the Ember if it was a repeat of game one, to be honest. The Ember just had very Dire little impact band. at all. It wasn't really his fault, considering how things were going. It's like he lost two lanes. And it's not like they controlled the Earthshaker that well, because, you know, when you have a really fat Earthshaker, or when he gets his core items, he starts remaining. making things happen all around the map, it destroys you. It really does destroy you. Radiant and then Team Ban. lineup just in game one just really had no way, no comeback mechanism in the high ground. I mean, it was 14 minutes we saw T3 taken out already. That's really quick. So, right now, DK, they're going to take out the gyro. 10 seconds remaining. Probably baiting out in a dying pick up ban from Dorbao. 5 seconds remaining. I don't know, I felt that like Mung really got outdrafted really, really hard for game two. Let's see. I mean, Tusk, I know, is going to offlane, so it doesn't have to be a support Tusk. Ancient Apparition. I'm just going to actually mean that DK might want to pick up the Dazzle for themselves. The Chilling Touch, it's going to make zoning really, really easy, actually. Same time. Yeah, Dorba about thinking. Mung is gonna think again. He's gonna just think and think and think. You think, my friend. Think yourself to a really awesome draft. We want to see a really good game too. Come on. All right, so we're gonna take out the Juggernaut. Radiant team pick. Fair enough. It's really annoying. It's a good carry as well. I mean, now we see that variation instead of the previous. Um, Skill build back then when his crit attack speed was just really crazy. I mean, people just max out the crit, go for the mask of madness, Bloody all that, etc., etc. Et but Dire team now, not pick. so much. Now it's pretty much all about the Blade Fury, level four Blade Fury bounty. Oh boy, 
Alright guys, I'm gonna go to story time here. I had a friend who grinded all the 4.5k just playing Bounty Hunter. Yeah, it's the really annoying hero in pub games. Just that hero helps you snowball really well. He's good for comeback as well. Remaining. You get a couple of kills. You get way more more value out of it thanks to the track. Five seconds remaining. And he has a very very strong burst in the shuriken toss. So once you get to like level four, level five, I mean just even the first few levels, the bounty hunter is just a really annoying hero. Here. DK is gonna go for the nice bit setup of the sleeve on the and the bane. It's just, yeah, it's good. So even if shadow fiend goes for BKB, you also have your fiend's grip. It's gonna take care of that. This is where Dark Seer usually has to come in. You wait for you probably you know, the ideal fight would be to go for like you know you, t you pop your BKB, the Bane goes to Fiend Scream. Now that's when the vacuum comes in. You keep the vacuum mostly for that, unless of course the Ur like Earthshaker comes in. But at this rate, I doubt. Ten seconds. It's probably gonna be like a dazzle or something for sure, where you know a range support. Five seconds remaining. All right, Reserve so time. right now, Team Torbal. Range support and a hard carry. Oh, you've got 30 seconds left again. Mung, he really likes to take his time, doesn't he? But then again, maybe he's just drafting really slow in case one of his teammates probably went to the bathroom again, just like game one. Alright, so we're running on time again. 15 seconds. It's gonna be. 10 seconds remaining. Rubik! Dire okay, so hit. now, since he's picked up the Rubik, let's take a quick look at your potential. Yeah, your, your potential spell steals. Alright, so you've got the sleep. Allows for setup. Actually, that's really good because you can go for the setup into the Requiem of Souls. I mean, you could always just do that with the telekinesis alone. It's not gonna, ma it's gonna do, not gonna do the max duration, of course. And it's like you got perfect timing positioning, which is unlikely. You can steal the ice glass, chill and touch. Well, I doubt you're getting ice glass that easily, unless you have like a blink to get away. Five seconds remaining. There's no way an ancient apprentice is gonna be like in range of the spell steal. It shouldn't happen. Reserve time. All right, and at the same time, you still chill and touch. Bit of damage for a bounty, worth it. You can steal snowball, war's punch, shards. A lot of annoying spells, actually. I mean, yeah, you wouldn't see them as like huge impact spells, but still, they're really good for setup. So now that DK see the Rubik, they're probably gonna think a bit harder on like the carries to pick. Spectre still in the pool. Dying. Radiant team band. Alright, it's gonna be the Tony. Why is there a Tony? Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be an IO. There's no way there's an IO. There's just no room on the on like the lineup for the IO already. So maybe Magnus? Ten seconds remaining. I wouldn't say no to the Magnus even though there's the Rubik. Five seconds remaining. At the same time, you, you can think about it like the Bane, you go for the Sleep, you go for the Avalanche Toss combo. Yeah, this is just really, really Dire creepy. Team ban. So Team Torpa, they will take out the Wraith King. They're just banning out whatever like, safe lane carry heroes you can think about. But then again, DK, they do play these heroes. They're not afraid to like experiment outside all these really annoying heroes. I'm not surprised Ten if you know, these, are, these are probably like one of your potential teams who will play terribly once he's opened back into Captain's Five world. seconds remaining. Last pick. Reserve time. Clinks, banned out. Radiant team pick. Yeah, I mean, like I mentioned, Spectre still in the pool. You could always go for other crazy safe lane heroes. Wouldn't say no to an invoker at this rate. Actually, just to kite around the DK, you know, DK's lineup. Some bit of AOE would be nice. Bristleback still out in the pool. Slark, anti mage. Just naming all these heroes I can think of at the top of my head. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, Dolba has to think. Five right. seconds Please remaining. don't go for the anti range. She's gonna get wrecked by a Tiny. It's going for the PL again. Dire team pick. Put a little bit of his lesson from the previous game. So s set up, set up, set up. I oh, know I'm just more concerned about like in terms of synergy, like team fight synergy. 
vacuum into like a requiem of souls that's really one of your best case scenarios the worst case scenario is probably like the vacuum doesn't synergize with the pl and all the extending these fights and tiny with axe has pretty much a natural cleave Ten very very remaining. strong cleave against these illusions so even by some chance you got like Five a manta diffuser blade the cleave damage alone is just enough to just whack and just clear all your monkeys Slug. and the slark's gonna come from dk talk about a toss into the pounce combo so Slark's gonna spend plenty of time in the air. This is brave. Yeah, this is this is really really brave actually. Because Phantom Lance of a Diffuser can actually just pretty much wreck the Slark. All these illusions. Late game, but early game wise, DK has a lot of bursts. It's strong enough to take out heroes like the Bounty, the Rubik, the Shadow Fiend. Even Darks here, he's not exactly that, like, super tanker. Right, so there we go, into the game. Quickly introducing the teams on the Radiant side. We have the Demigod playing on the PL, Prepare Shadow on the Shadow Fiend. Battle. Triple Z on the Rubik. We're gonna have Mung playing on the Darks here. Over here is the port you can see here. Candyman, all the way on the Bounty Hunter. He's really TP'd in place, it's a very nice ward. QD, gonna have Clark. We're gonna have Chun playing on the Tony, Boboka. On the Bane with Rung on the Ancient Apparition. Offlane, it's gonna be XXS. Extra small. Alright, so where is the Bane going to? Uh, this is a very nice scouting, very nice reconnaissance coming out from the Bounty Hunter. He's gonna know that the tiny, and everyone's at the top of the river, and yeah, Shadow Fiend is just gonna rotate. He's gonna bugger off to the bottom part of the river. He knows that the whole of TK is over here, so he's not going to do that. The tower does scout out that he has used at, you know, the Windwalk. Still not calling it Shadow Walk, if you used to. Dota 1. Alright, so easy bounty, going a piece. And this Tango, don't get it wrong, it's not, it's pretty, it's not really for like, you know, just consuming and just regeneration. It's mostly just because you want to get the quick D ward with the sentries. The battle begins. Down to a piece. It's gonna be a mid Tony. Plenty of. a lot of bursts. Whew. I wouldn't want to be this SF if the tiny gets big or even gets a couple more levels. Just like level 6. Actually, no, I think by level 4 he's actually should be enough to just destroy this SF in the lane. Alright, so there we go. Sits and denies, having a bit of fun with Boboka. Training is gonna be dual lane against dual lane. He's gonna have body advantage for the Shadow Fiend. Top lane, now oh, this is actually quite dangerous. Your QD is trying to go and bunker all these ion shells in the world. And the chilling touch is not gonna do much because these ion shells, three of them here actually make that two now. But okay. And just like that, Mung, half HP. This middle lane. Put a sentry down looking for a ward, but not gonna find it because the ward's all the way here and it's gonna give him enough high ground vision at least on the tiny. And he has to play very safe. And I'm pretty sure Boboka and Shadow Fiend are not afraid to trade hits at this point. Because this is when Shadow Fiend is probably at his weakest. Oh, bounty and iron shell into Rome. This is really annoying. Out of sleep. Chen going to go for the toss back. Where's this avalanche? They have enough damage. One more hit each. Yes, first blood will go the way of the bait. And meanwhile, Phantom Lancer will get a kill onto the Tuscar. Action happening on both sides of the map. It was just pretty much a first blood race. They want to like, compete. Who's going to get that first? It's a bounty. Having a bit of fun. Screwing around the pool a bit. And Cutie's going to be doing okay against Monkey. He's actually going to just leap in. Oh, the leap's not going to do that much, actually. It's going to just surge away. And I'm surprised. Wait, do they actually see the ward? Oh god, it's actually just right outside the range of the ward. And XXS has to play very safe. Because he realizes he can die. There's just so much new potential in the PL. You know, short cooldown. Decent enough mana cost. Fair bit amount of damage. It's fun. Aw, oh, nice teamwork. Bane's gonna come in for the sleep, but the ward's gonna scout him out just in the nick of time. So you pretty much imagine, like, you know, with, with the tiny, he passes the bottle to the Bane. He doesn't really care about what room he gets, because I don't think he intends to roam for now. He can't. Alright, Mung, go get yourself some levels, my friend.
Oh, he's actually gonna just right click down wrong. All the Venom doing a lot of work and poof. Leap and the sentry down. This is one dead bounty hunter. Actually, the creep's gonna like, chaos them. Oh, this is just embarrassing. Bane and SF having a few hits trade here and there. He actually can die. He has a spell on five. Life drain. He's gonna wait here to SF and Tango this way. So just like that, SF has been zoned out. And Bounty's gonna TP to the middle lane. Go get the level two. He's gonna immediately take out the ward. Tony Avalanche press the toss. Tossed all the way back to the creep wave and the dust to fall. This is another feed. Oh, one easy kill again for the tiny. And this is not what what you want to be doing. He's winning in last hits. Now you're giving him kills. Disaster. But he's not on top of the net worth. I mean, you always have to PL who is still on top. Free farming this lane. So back to this is three to one in favor of DK. QD. He's actually gone for the level two pounds. He's not gone for that level like you know the ma you max out your dark pack usually for a bit of extra damage. It does more. And now Meng coming in. This ion shell windwalk. Invisible paint. It's all in your head, bro. It's all in your head. Triple Z and Bobocar can each find a couple of kills here. I don't think so. And Bao's gonna find himself a nice haste route. Top lane is still getting pressured, but QD should be okay. I mean, the lane is always gonna be pushed in regardless because of the ion shell. And actually, I think Shadowfin, he's thinking we're rotating to top lane, but. DK, I'm pretty sure they No, actually wait, no, TP's on cooldown. That would've been perfect to just go in for a kill. Plus still level 3. And QD's gonna get soft up. Yeah, this is much... Like, peaceful game compared to game 1. I mean, top lane is having a bit of fun and Bounty Hunter again feeds himself away. The surge is gonna come up, but it's worn off. And there's no follow up. So there we go. Continuous feeding coming out from your Bounty Hunter. He's now down to 609 net worth. Just dirt ass poor. Doesn't even have boots. Can't afford it. And Tiny is gonna find himself an easy kill on Shadowfin again and gets it. Ah, oh, that's just really, really disgusting. You know, when you have all that nuke damage coming from a Tiny. And now because of that kill, especially in a high priority target like the Shadow Fiend, this is this is just really really disgusting with his net worth how far he'll climb. So it's probably this is probably like one of those really awesome games where you can go into a blink dagger, you might even go into Shadow Blade. Wrong still on boots. So now, now TP coming into the lane. So QD is not having a bit of fun here. He doesn't know he's being stalked by the bounty. Invision, we may take it immediately by Boboka. He's gonna find himself a nice bit of setup. Can you find a triple Z? Probably not. And Shadow is gonna try and come back, get a bit of comeback from from this jungle. He's actually half the net worth of the tiny. Oh QD, he's gonna find himself Mill. But after the pounce, he decides, nah, I'm going against it. He's just going to back off. And the bounty's going to try at least stop a bit of the regeneration, but... Oof. And this is where the bounty has to be really careful, because if there's detection on DK's side, they can always kill him off very, very easily. So tiny, we go for drums, we go for blink. Yeah, this is just horrible. Cleaning phase. Um, Bubblecar is probably mm. gonna fall here. Shirk and Toss needs a couple more. Spells. And oh, the Sergio is gonna try and save him off a bit. Bubblecar puts himself to sleep. You need a bit more. You need a few more heroes, but here comes Tiny and the Avalanche. Ah, oh, Bug. He needs one more right He can't get it to Tusk. So the Sergio is gonna try and slow him down, but it's not gonna do enough. And he, if they had one more hero, just a bit more. Chen probably gonna. Call it. Yeah, he's gonna find some nice new surprise pick up here. And easy double kill, dominating speed for the Chen. Alright, so you can see the Chen really snowballing very, very hard. Shadow Friend. Well, he's gonna get himself a bit more alone time. Happy time. 
thousand two hundred guns in his pockets. You could always go into you know that Aghanim Scepter if he wants. Radiance but I really don't think that's the game plan here. This is probably attack. like the blink for getting those kills, get Burma into the action. Yeah, she's, I think he can kill, solo kill Triple Z. Nah, he's gonna go do go straight for the rune. Pia, find close to nice bit of farm. Wave is very, very pushed in. Mung still making his way to the sorry He actually doesn't have. He's gonna skip the soaring. He has a bottle. Akula coming up from QD. You usually want that just with the mana regeneration. SF in the enemy jungle looking for stacks. He didn't find anything. That's because the tiny wasn't even stacking at all. And the supports are too busy, you know, doing, doing things more on the map. Oh, here, Chen. He has the haste He's gonna look for the kill. Toss. Oh, one more hit. He's actually gonna get the kill. Can he get a sure shuriken? Toss. Chen. Healing up. Trying to go for one more kill. He's gonna back up. And it looks like the cold feet wasn't a creep on the wrong, wrong target. Success. Getting closer to that level six. Shadow Fiend, well, he, what, you know, he's finally gonna get his treads, like right now. Can't really do much about this game for now. Alright, so. Quickly, gold chart, favor of DK, just over 2000. Radiance you can see here the hero down. levels. SF is catching up, thanks to the jungle, because that's just perks of the Radiant SF. When we're talking about last hits wise, the PL is actually on top. He has been neglected for quite a while, and the Aquila. Let's go to his treads. And actually here the Fiend script is gonna kill the bounty hunter again just in the nick of time. Um, you can see here from the KDA your bounty is 0 out of 5. Just happily, you know, this is like a 4v6 kind of game. Yeah, this is not exactly how you want to be playing a bounty. Just really bad luck. Alright, so for here right now, Bane's gonna put in a nice ward. He's gonna be scouted out, they will know he's there. Triple C looking for the telekinesis, he's not gonna get- Oh wait, he's gonna make up the tower and the lads will follow Bobocast, he's gonna call him. He tries to get his life away, he's gonna put him to sleep. Oh, he's still alive, but Ruby's gonna get the last click and it's gonna be 336 gold going his way. Ward money with the person. And actually, a tiny shows of his new blink! Bye, goodbye! And he's gonna get himself a nice kill. Ice Blast coming in. Oh, this is a horrible idea, and the Ice Blast is gonna kill him off. Triple Z, Telekinesis is trying to slow things off, but Chen, he should have a bit more. He got, really wants to end it. Fly, my friend, just fly and die, go to hell. And Tusker's gonna find himself the Rubik at the same time, so DK once again stomping all over Dorbao. Top lane, QD, it doesn't matter. They should know that the bounty hunter is there, it is daytime. So, if he's not regenerating, it's either, it either means that there's a ward over there or the BH is there. And now that the regeneration is procking again, QD's gonna know. And I have a feeling in the bottom lane, someone's gonna die. Because PL is hiding in the trees. AA Ice Blast is coming in. Uh, actually, maybe not. They're not gonna go for it anymore. Radiant's Bit of middle tower is under attack. Oh, that rush. Just in the nick of time. I'm gonna fight it for the pounds. They need a bit more damage. And actually, yes, the chilling touch. Extra 50 damage making all the difference in the world. And now, he's done. Perfectly, and they will kill him off. The Tiny's gonna get himself a tower kill, and the Phantom Land that's on a monster kill streak. It's 8 and 0. Drums just com got completed. DK, he's not going for late game. They want to end this really, really early. Alright, so you see here, hi. And the bottom lane, yep, they want to kill him off again. Another E, they kill an ancient average, is gonna find some nice little kill gold going the way his. Yeah, he's, he's pretty much getting closer and closer to the Midas. As the side T1 is down, it's going to be an easy T1 mid soon, that should be the plan. And this just means that they have easier access to the jungle, and Tiny is gonna be just wrecking this Dyer's SF, just spitting in his face. Right, so Bobo is still babysitting that rune. Tiny's gonna get it. Radiance middle tower is and under with attack. the drums and the blink, it's. I really don't think that, you know, you get away from this. It's so tough. Just 
scouting things out. Yeah, they're not gonna find anybody, so they will realize that this T1 pretty much a freebie. Radiance middle tower is How's under attack. Slock doing on farm. Dyer's top tower. Is under attack. Just try to He's actually closer to the shadow base. Thousand hundred gold next. And uh, your PL thousand five hundred gold. So I hope this is not your BOT. So it'll be a horrible item choice at this time. He's picked up the ring of Aquila, which means he's not going for the ring of Bassy anytime soon. If anything, it should probably be like drums into a flat, not flats. Um, Diffusal blade, or even just a casual Yasha, just so you know, he can fight. Even a mountain though. Nice. Shadow over here, 164 gold. Next item for change will definitely be Mega Interceptor. Standard stuff. He doesn't even really have to worry about fighting with his team. XXS. Yeah, this is Radiant just really, really horrible. Chen's gonna get up another tower. You, they need to stop letting this rockman inf inflate. He's getting so big so fast. Middle tower has fallen. Plane team is coming in, trying to slow things down a bit, but I think it's a bit too late. QD is already very close at 13 and 14 minutes, and he's got Treads color close to Shadow Blade. And that's when he can really start fighting a lot more. Actually, then he's got land thrown at him, and that's the end of that story. And actually, top lane, whoa, they actually do kill the Darks here. They're gonna go for Mimo. Can he turn things around? I think he can, but no, he just popped his ult already. Oh, he still has it. He can turn around. But probably didn't want to. And a blast not gonna kill him, just very, very close. He's probably like 30 Go HP. On. And tiny, actually, wait, he's gonna find himself the shadow. Okay. Double damage. Oh, I'm missing all these 40 kills. Alright, so. Big. Yeah, the triples, he has to be very, very careful because at this point, tiny can just really just one shot and blink. Avalanche top. There we go, that's what I was talking about. He in terms of stomping in the face, he's at 9.2k net worth at 14 minutes in. Item progression wise, you can see, see here for yourself, he's just really, really, really big. Darkseer has the buckler, not going for the mech yet. How much more does he have? He's actually 500 gold away. So, what is SF going for? Is that going to be a BKB? Yep, it will be. It's either BKB or Sanj and Yasha. Radiance middle tower is under the BKB will probably help him sustain a bit more against the Tiny, but Tiny has just all this natural right click damage. Cutie, Radiant trying to push in this top, top lane a bit. And now, go about just on the back foot. Top lane. Ah, oh, monk. Horrible place to be, my friend. Yeah, you're just dead. And easy DK just stomping all over them. Any hero gets close to the tower, you have to deal with all this nuke, all this pickup potential from DK. And DK just executing it, you know, executing that draft perfectly. Oh, Dota. The Shadow Blade. I think Cutie, he Rain's wants to find another kill. Tower is under attack. Okay, there's a sentry over there, but it's not going to matter much. Because right now, as we speak, the top T2, this is going to fall. And we're done. Tiny gets himself another tower kill. He's going to have this. Oh, that's such sick timing for an Axe. It's 800 more gold away. 700. Make it 700. Yeah, so he's going to have an Axe and all before 20 minutes. He is so massive right now. This is like your pup stomp. And now, oh, they put a very aggressive observer. They're gonna spot two of them and they're gonna go straight for the river, but no telekinesis quickly. And they're gonna kill nice Ellen catches them too. Yep, plenty of time. And the Fiend's going to follow. Bane's gonna get the first kill on the Rubik. And now the Fiend's gonna finish off the Shadow Fiend. Goodbye, Titan's gonna send him flying all the way back down to hell. And they're gonna find one, they're gonna find Monk. He's gonna search himself away. They need Avalanche, Avalanche, Avalanche. Oh, dead. Goodbye. Another kill. That is his axe at 16 minutes. Start continues to free farm. He's like, ah, don't bother me, guys. I'm done. He's just happy farming, farming all he wants. So yeah, it's so pretty much a repeat of the same situation as game one, where you can see. DK supports are actually almost as rich as the cores on Dorbao. DK. The Tuscar has a flank, he has a turn, chain boots. Take a quick look at item progression wise. You can see, yep, Ancient Apparition has his hand of Midas as well. 17 minutes in your Darkseer, you know, one day 
he was so close to a mech. But till now, this is just really, really far away from that mech. Bottle probably wasn't a good idea. So it won't be long before they probably do Roshan, unless they just intend to take all the T2s. Bang. Hastrian gonna be used. Tower is under attack. A nice smoke gang coming out. Oh, they know where Bobokai is. They're gonna try to go kill by Shannon comes in immediately. Oh, the new coming up. Looking for the graphics, so not even gonna get a hit off the ball. Oh, Hiding is a double kill, and Hunter is secure, and the Ancient Ambush is going to kill him off as well. It's going to be 4 for 0, and it's just going to be an instant GG at 18 minutes in. DK is humiliating. Oh, wow. Oh, this is just. Whew, this is just really, really gross. Alright, so there. DK.